Deciding where to invest your marketing bills is not a decision you take lightly as a small business or a growing one. You know you need to attract new customers and keep your existing clients coming back, but you can't afford to invest time or resources into something that is not going to deliver the results you expect. That's why email marketing is important when it comes to small business marketing and beyond. In order to make a decision on whether or not it is right for your business, it is important to know the benefits of email marketing. But that's our focus on the show for today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. <music> All right, welcome back. The federal government says the foundation for a resurgent economy has been laid in the past eight years. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, said this during an interactive session between government officials and members of the organized private sector. Now, the session is coming ahead of the general elections. Take a look. <laughs> members of the organized private sector federal and Lagos state government officials gather here to dialogue on key economic reforms that will put Nigeria back in the progressive lane. Governor Somolu takes to the podium to speak on his themes agenda and how impactful it has been over the years. And the GDP of Lagos is clearly over 120 billion right now, so which makes it closer to 30% of the GDP of our country. And of course, the GDP is bigger than the GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than the GDP of Ghana, it's bigger than the GDP of Ivory Coast. And so you can see that indeed your city, your state, is in itself a big country that we're all just struggling you know, to fit into. The interactive forum breaks into a panel session. Ben Akabuizi. Thank you. A round of applause for him. Issues bordering on infrastructure, sustainable development goals, post-COVID-19 economy to immigration of Nigerians top the discuss. We must all sit together and decide what we want. Um, infrastructure can never be seen as short-term. Uh, so we need to understand it, that it is a long-term strategy. How do we effectively work with you to make this a policy? So working with government, it's very important that you make it policy-driven for us as private sector to be able to work with you. According to the federal government, the country's infrastructure stock moved from 20 to 35 percent in seven years, despite being faced with the challenges brought by COVID-19. Against all the odds, this government and this party turned around what was a global impact at a local stage, and we have had consecutive growth. What the presidential candidate, by his manifesto and by our disposition, want to do now is to multiply 3% growth to 7, 8, and more percent growth so that the benefits can then be felt. But we want more uh, support, participation from the private sector. We government alone cannot do this. We need your support. And of course, in two ways, private investment, corporate social responsibilities, and all other participation you can you can think of if you look at the public expenditure to gdp ratio also we are currently as nigeria at about you know 13 percent of of gdp again even the african average is about 22 uh, you know percent not to talk of and on the continent of africa people like south africa the consensus here is that with a symbiotic relationship between the government and the organized private sector the economic drive of lagos and the federal government can be sustained <laughs> And now to our discussion for today. The benefits of email marketing for small businesses are not always obvious. Email marketing is being used by thousands of organizations to promote their businesses and to grow revenue. If you're on the fence about email or overwhelmed with information, we want to help you get started. My guest, Akwemi Emmanuel, is the CEO and founder of Tribe Arc Limited, a company that develops suits of software that Africans use to build their businesses. As a senior software engineer, he manages all of Tribe Arc's product-related matters from product management to user experience, research and design to product. Analytics, thanks for joining us on Business Insight and Plus TV Africa, Emmanuel. 
Thanks, Justin. All right, so it is indeed a pleasure. Email marketing, it sounds so simple, but let's just then break it down. What exactly is it? All right, thanks, Justin. Nice to be here again. Yeah. Um, Email marketing is simple, like we, we said earlier, it's a form of marketing, uh, even the oldest form of marketing that, that you've, you've always seen around, but it's that form of marketing where you send promotional messages to your customers, it's just to generate leads, uh, to generate sales, or to convert them, or to nurture them, or just to keep them uh, promotional discounts, or just keep them updated about your product or services. Mm. So it's that simple. So how popular is it? Uh, uh, globally, and uh, if we have to bring it closer home, uh, is it something Nigerians are appreciative of or they've been using over time? Yeah, so um, some businesses are using it currently, uh, but not all businesses are actually leveraging and maximizing the power of email marketing because mm -hmm. email marketing is simple, it's very fast, it's direct, and it's the cheapest form of marketing. A lot of people still want to go for social media ads, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, and all of that, but that's more expensive, and with the changing, constantly changing algorithm of these social media platforms, they the reach, your organic reach, when you do those ads, right, they're actually reducing. Mm -hmm. So when you go for email marketing, you're going to be getting a 200% a, uh, return on investment when you use 200%? Email. Yes. That's huge. Over like social media double. ads. Double. Literally double. Oh, wow. According to Neil Patel, he even says about 500%. Oh, wow. That's, yes. that's huge. Yeah. Okay, you said Nigerians uh, have not fully, div uh, you know, um, harnessed uh, all the benefits uh, derivable thereof. Uh, can you uh, walk us through this benefit, so just in case uh, people are wondering why they need to get into email marketing? All right. So the the most important benefit of email marketing is this: is the fact that you can actually engage your customers directly mm -hmm. and kind of get closer to them by what we call segmentation. Oh. So, for example, if you have um, if you have 2,000 followers or fans on Facebook, for example, and you have 2,000 email ad addresses on your email list, mm. the truth is that if you send if you if you send a post, you know, on your Facebook page and say um, this is what's happening today and all of that, out of your 2,000 uh, fans on mm. Facebook, only about 128 people, according to research, uh, Upsport in particular, they said according to Upsport, about 128 people will are based on the algorithm of Facebook. Only 128 people or users will see that your post mm. because of the algorithm of Facebook. The same thing on Twitter. Even Twitter is about 1.2% of your posts are seen. But email, when you send email to 2,000 persons on your email list, the open rate globally, standard according to Upsport and other platforms, they said that globally about 60%, there is open rate of about 60%. That means that about 500 you know, to 600 emails will be opened when you send to people on your email list mm -hmm. as against sending a post. So what that means literally is that when you go with email marketing, you are going to have a uh, more uh, engagement with your customer because they're going to be reading your messages, they're going to be seeing what you're saying, and you can actually you know, sell to them and convert them. Okay, let's talk about the segmentation that you clearly mentioned, um, that just how does it really work? Yeah, so um, Justin, thank you for that question again. So what I was saying about segmentation is this. So people you can actually, you can know more about your customers from segmentation. So when you send out an email, the first time someone you know, comes to your website, for example, and you send them a message, via email. You can put in some links in there mm. to say, okay, um, I have a white shoe, I have a black shoe, which one will you prefer on mm. a Sunday afternoon, for example? And then your customer, of course, open this mail and then clicks one of the white, uh, clicks the white shoe. The system automatically, via automation, what we call email automation, sends a request back to the server saying that Justin, for example, likes white shoe mm. and it separates you into a different email list, mm. such that when you now visit my website tomorrow, I can already know that you like a white shoe, mm. and then I can be sending sub I can be sending to you subsequent emails about just white shoe and nothing anymore about black shoe. Yeah, that cool. is what cost segmentation. I can keep narrowing down okay. every day to just know exactly what you want. Okay, so you can now give me tailor a tailor made, made, made solutions. solutions. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, that's very 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 interesting. Although uh, I'll not really be caught wearing white shoes except their sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> that's just on the side. Uh, but then again, you also talked about uh, how you can actually leverage on sending in several uh, uh, messages all at a time. But uh, let's talk about how you actually would go about starting that. Because uh, uh, would you need to start gathering several email addresses or just how do you go about it? Yeah, so that's that? the first step, Justin. So the first step is to build your email list. Mm -hmm. And how do you build your email list? It's very simple. People think that that's very hard, but it's actually simpler than even coming up with content for your social media post. Mm -hmm. And this is how you do it. Just come up with something of value to the 
your potential customer segment. So, for example, if you're a coach or an author, you can come up with a very small 10 page ebook, mm -hmm. you know, maybe an, an, ex, um, an abstract or an excerpt from your from your book that you want to release in the future or something you've done in the past mm -hmm. and then put it up on a landing page a landing page is simply a one-page website mm -hmm. you know that you can put in an opt-in form an opt-in form is just a form where you can receive email addresses mm -hmm. right so put a picture of that ebook there say download this my free ebook you know and then um, when you read that ebook probably learn 10 ways of making money you know mm -hmm. in nigeria right now or how to spend money without cash in mm -hmm. Nigeria currently. That's the title of the ebook. So when people see that ebook, they're going to give you their email to download that free content. So that's how it works. So just put up a valuable content and then in exchange for that content, let people submit their email to get that content. And mm -hmm. then that's how you gather and build your email list. And once your email list has reached and grown to about a hundred, then you are good to start nurturing them. So mm -hmm. you start from capturing the leads, which is the emails by exchanging something of value for those emails, then you start sending emails by nurturing them. Like mm -hmm. nurturing means you are sending emails frequently to them mm -hmm. to tell them about different things mm -hmm. that is of value to them still. You are not selling at that point. Then once they are engaging with you and opening your email and they are, they are now loyal to your you know, email marketing strategy, yeah. then you can send a final email selling them to buy or to get something or to do something that you want them to really do. All right. So just before we came um, on air in our pre-chat, we're talking about uh, how it is you could... Um, send uh, the uh, divisive ways you could actually send these emails uh, so people could actually get to read them because uh, ordinarily if i open my 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 mailbox and i see messages uh, that are not really uh, from people that i can yeah, identify you know. i'll just delete without even reading so how can you do that uh, uh, judiciously and um, make uh, eye-catching uh, captions or emails so people ordinarily would just want to go through them. Fantastic question, Justin. So it's very simple or it's becoming simpler by the day. Mm -hmm. So before now, you have to be an expert in content writing to actually be able to come up with an email marketing content that is actually convincing, especially the subject line. Like I mm -hmm. said you know, before now that uh, when you go into your inbox, you're going to see a lot, thousands and thousands of email that uh, unsolicited emails that you mm -hmm. didn't even you know, subscribe to. But some of them, once in a while, because of their subject line, mm -hmm. usually sometimes you just see them, how do I get money without going to the ATM? Mm -hmm. You want to definitely find out about that. So mm -hmm. you click on that and you read that content. Okay. So that is how do you come up with cash content. Like I said, it's now simpler because you, don't, you no longer have to be a content writer to come up with cash subject line. And what's the solution or what's the catch there? It's something called artificial intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. So there are actually you know, platforms you can go to that you can say, okay, I'm, I want to write a mail about um, something, something, something. Uh, you know, what mm -hmm. I'm writing the mail to my audience about something, a particular topic, and the AI will tell you ten different suggested powerful mm. subject lines you can use that will be guaranteed that they will open yeah. and then it can even go further to you know open uh, tell you write for you the content of the email mm. so you just give it some prompt right so there are different platforms out there like that mm. and try back is one of them also so all right you know, okay yeah. before you start um, so try back <laughs> all right it's still um, business um, insights on plus tv africa and of course uh, we still have uh Okay, me Emmanuel Udosa, he is a uh, email marketing uh, specialist expert. Uh, if you like, uh, we'll take a quick break. There's a whole lot more we still need to talk about. If there are do's and don'ts uh, to be observed, uh, I hear there's some sort of a 5T, 80 20 rule. We'll be talking about all of that in a moment. You just want to hang around for that. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am having a wonderful time. I've been receiving useful insight about. Uh, email marketing. I'm sure you also have. We still have uh, okay, me, Emmanuel with us and he's been sharing useful tips. Emmanuel, thanks for staying with us. Thank you, Justin. All right. Uh, before I, I went on that break, I was talking about um, do's and don'ts. You talked about uh, catchy captions. Are there things to be observed and things uh, that you should do away with when we talk about email marketing? Yeah. So, yeah. So there are do's and don'ts, right? So there's something called spam um, emails, right? right? So there is a whole lot of algorithm that email engines use to actually filter out what should go into your inbox, what should go into your promotional in a box and then maybe your spam box or mm -hmm. even not even get to you at all. Yeah. So right, so how do you bypass or what do you do to actually get into inbox of people? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is that your content must be personalized, right? So you don't want to uh, write a mail and then just broadcast it to over a thousand persons. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it doesn't make sense. In fact, once, once, the, Google, uh, once the engine, the email engine sees that those kind of emails that is not personalized to the, to the mm -hmm. owner of that account, it's going to just throw it into spam. So that's the first rule. Personalize your emails. And how do you personalize your emails? Make sure that within your email content, even inclusive of the subject line, include mm -hmm. the name of the person in there. So you're saying, um, okay, so mm -hmm. The, the platform already allow you to do that. So it's not like you have to send one by one to all the you know, 1,000 email mm -hmm. addresses. You just type one content, then the email platforms actually allow you to put what we call personalization tags, which mm -hmm. is the name of each person. So once you put the tags there, when the system is about sending the email to all the 1,000 persons, it's going to replace the names of each individual within that mail to mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. So you just need to send it once, but the system is going to replace everybody's name. So as you send it to Justin, you're going to see Justin in your okay, mail. Okay, let, let's break it down now, um, okay, because uh, it, it sounds so wonderful. But then, uh, are you saying, for instance, uh, we are sending uh, mails out there to about um, a thousand people, oh, yeah. our emails, and uh, you have their names. So you have to impute all the thousand names as per uh, or okay. how? Or okay, how so you, don't, just put up there. Yeah, don't, don't forget that. that yes, yes. So don't forget that there was a capturing part. Okay. So when you're actually capturing the emails, mm. the owner of the emails have supplied his name and his okay. email to download your free email. Oh, wow, that's true. So yeah. that name and email is already in the system. Okay. So now what you need to do is to just type the content of your mail, mm. type your subject line, include those personalization tags okay. in between where you want the name oh, to right, show, okay. then send the mail. Then the system now goes in through all the 1,000 email addresses. It knows their name and their email addresses. So it's going to, when it's sending to Justin's email address, it's going to now insert Justin's name in between you know, oh, locations wow. within the mail. And that's what it's going to do for everybody. Okay. So once your email uh, engine receives that kind of mail, it knows that this person knows Justin. That's why it's putting Justin's name everywhere. Mm. So it's going to throw it into the and inbox. Not necessarily for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to throw it into the. That, that's the first first rule. The second rule is that mm. when you're starting out in your email marketing journey, you should ensure that you are not sending too many. Mm. You know, at once. Don't send emails every day to people that you don't know. Okay. So maximum, when you're starting out, send twice a week. If, okay. as a matter of fact, when you're starting out, once a week. That's okay. another rule. So I can go on and go and, and on and on. But those okay. two are very important: the frequency and personalization. Of course, there are other things that are complex, but I don't want to mention, okay. like what we call DKIM, SPF, and all of that. But okay. let's leave That's that to technical bit, people. Technical yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I was trying to do some um, some reading uh, concerning email marketing. I hear there's um, a 5T uh, or 80-20 or rule. What does that really mean? Okay, so for the 80-20 rule, it simply means that, of course, generally 80-20 rule means mm -hmm. that you're doing, you know, 80% um, of what you're doing is mm -hmm. coming from 20% of mm -hmm. the, or, or it's 20 percent of what you're doing is coming from 80% of the results or vice versa, right? Okay. So in the email uh, world, it means that when you start sending out your emails to people, it means that at the beginning, you can actually get about 20% open, open rate, mm -hmm. right? 20% of your entire email uh, uh, list will actually mm -hmm. open your email, right? But as you now segment down, as you keep segmenting down, so you send out a, a, an email to 1,000 uh, email addresses, mm -hmm. about 20% of them open that email address, mm -hmm. right? What you should do if your system that you're using is very good is that it automatically move those 20 people, 20% uh, that open the email mm -hmm. into a new list. Oh, That's wow. segmentation. Mm -hmm. So you know you have 80% unopened email addresses mm -hmm. or that have not opened your email. 20% have now engaged and have opened. Mm -hmm. So the message, the next message you're going to send out should mm -hmm. not be the same for the two groups. Okay. So you should send a more personalized to email 20%. to this 20% yeah. and then something else to the 80% telling them, oh, last time we sent you an email, you didn't open it, do you want to see something else now? So that's how you keep narrowing down until you now have eventually an 80% mm. that is now engaged, active, loyal, wants to read your content, they are, you know, they are waiting for your mail every time. Mm. That is where you will get your most results from that you should focus on. But how soon can you get to that particular status? So it depends. Between... Uh, one month to three months, you can actually move from zero to 80%. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's really very interesting. Hmm. All right, uh, still about uh, uh, email marketing, as much as possible, try to advise uh, starters and small businesses on this particular show uh, on how they really need to go and uh, how they can scale up their, their businesses as it is right now. Still on the, this particular marketing strategy, uh, would you really need um, some sort of um, formalized training? You talked about the catchy captions. Uh, it's not everyone uh, that is really so savvy when it comes to writing and all that. Or would you need a professional help or maybe a professional 
to be added to your business. Yeah, so, so. like I said, um, I, I mentioned something before the break that mm. there is now AI, artificial, artificial intelligence, okay. involving mm. email marketing. So you don't have to get go for any training. Though you can know the basics, like the rules, the do's and don'ts, and mm. you know frequency and all of that. AI might not help you with that, but the base, the, the real core of writing the actual catchy content, you know, content that converts. You don't have to be an expert content writer to do that. You can delegate that task to an artificial intelligence, you mm. know, tool. Out there, and there are so many of them. All right, then how do you go about? Um, how often do you go about uh, review or evaluation uh, as you send out these emails, and uh, uh, you want to know how far they have reached and uh, what impact um, they have made? How soon should, be, should you be talking about evaluation and uh, maybe analysis on them? Yeah, so almost every other day you should be doing that. So if you're also using a very good platform, you know, like Tribac, you should get a report. At mm -hmm. the end, once you send out an email, almost immediately, if anybody opens, even the next second, if anybody opens, the system already knows that someone has opened. Mm -hmm. So you as the um, marketing um, um, chief uh, executive or a marketing manager or wherever you are, you should be looking at a dashboard where you see the report, a detailed report of every mail that you sent out. And then you should be seeing the segmentation happening because segmentation is the power of email marketing, mm -hmm. not the first mail. is how far you can segment down to the real, loyal, active, engaged customers. Customers. So you want to keep segmenting that. So what I'm saying is that you can be every 24 hours, you should, you should have a dashboard in front of you that shows you your open rate, your click rate, your people that are unsubscribing, people that are bouncing, mm -hmm. emails that are invalid, a whole lot of stuff should be on your dashboard that you should be analyzing every 24 hours. Mm, I, I still am interested in understanding more because uh, uh, some people might feel that, uh, oh, what are they talking about? This is sounding too formal. My business has not been uh, uh, scaled up to that level. Uh, does it really matter about the size of um, the business, the scope of the business, or uh, the market uh, uh, segmentation per se that um, the business uh, deal in? Yeah, uh, just how? whether it really depends on the industry you are in, mm, all of that. Yeah. No, it doesn't really. Okay. The, the truth is that once you engage, once any customer walks into your store, even if you are an offline business, you are a barber shop or yeah. you are a, a, a clothes seller, a fashion designer, whatever, once a customer engages your business, the first time you should get their email because you don't want to spend it's, 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 there's a saying that says that um, it's always easier to resell to an old customer than mm -hmm. to acquire a new one mm -hmm. right so you always want to once you have an engage um, uh, a contact with your customer get their email address because you can always re-engage them you can always sell to them you can always you know, nurture them through email marketing mm -hmm. so irrespective of the size of your business or whatever industry you are in or uh, whether you are an sme a big business mm -hmm. enterprise whatever size of your business you should be capturing emails and you mm -hmm. should be using that because you don't want to be spending so much money on social media ads mm -hmm. you know when you now really want to uh, you know increase the visibility of your business you don't want to be spending so, so many uh, so much money on affiliate marketing mm -hmm. or you want to be doing influencer marketing those mm -hmm. are expensive routes mm -hmm. you know email is free it's cheaper and it's direct. So once someone walks into your store as a barber, mm. I tell you, if you understand the power of marketing, you should have a form somewhere in front of your, oh, wow. at the front of your barber shop <laughs> saying, please drop your email address. If you wow. drop your email address, we give you 10% discount on your next court. Oh, wow. So that you can uh, is, uh, kind of encourage them to drop their email. And what would that would do for you is that once you have those email addresses that people are dropping it, mm. one you now have, maybe for example, you are changing location from your former store to another store. Maybe mm. you're growing bigger. You have their email addresses. You can just send them an email, inform mm -hmm. them that you've changed the addresses. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you have um, a promo coming or maybe Valentine that happened yesterday, for yes. example. You want to give every, you know, uh, a salon. I want to give every lady in mm -hmm. town a, a subsidized, you know, air, 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 mm -hmm. air styling for, for their Valentine's Because day. I was going to ask that uh, if uh, there are like classification to yeah. these meals like that, are, are they just uh, for promotional basis? Uh, informational basis or maybe just that uh, to just keep tabs with your customers or to tell them about trends or just how I just need to know yeah so there are different types of emails that you can send there are promotional mails there are informational mails there is newsletter just a regular information updates and then there is maybe a discount coupon code that you want to send there is transactional mails which are just like your password reset codes and all mm -hmm. of that so there are different kind of email but all of them is uh, all of them should be included in your email marketing strategy so mm -hmm. there are some times you just want to give value so you actually would need a strategy yes you need a stra definitely you need an email okay. marketing strategy so mm -hmm. it's like i said it starts with capturing the emails the strategy mm -hmm. starts with capturing the emails then nurturing them nurturing means that you 
you want to have a period where you're actually giving them value, mm. you know, so that they can constantly open your email. So anytime they see there's a, pop a popular guy in town that every time everybody sees his email, they want mm. to just read it because oh, wow. it gives valuable information. Oh, wow. So that is what you want to do. That's what nurturing means. So mm. once you have captured people's email, like I was uh, I'll giving an instance of the barber shop, collect mm. their email addresses, but be sending them emails about this nest uh, or, or trending style mm -hmm. that a guy can make that every lady in town will follow him. Mm -hmm. You know, send mm -hmm. emails about how to maintain maybe your uh, grooming whatever and grooming tips. and tips and all of that. Mm -hmm. So as they see that you're giving them value, mm -hmm. you actually, they are becoming lawyer and more open to opening your emails. Wow. So, but there will come a time where you actually want them to take a particular action. Mm -hmm. Either you want them to come to your shop and mm -hmm. buy, maybe he has a new clipper he's selling to mm -hmm. customers or he has something, you know, value to them that he wants them to buy. Then well, once you've not them for a while, then they will be open to clicking or taking the action. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. They'll be open to taking the action that you, you the, the um, business owner really wants them to take at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So mm -hmm. that's how it works. So you capture the emails, you nurture them for a period, then you give them a call to action to actually convert them to mm -hmm. you know, a customer to a sale. Well, uh, the benefits are just uh, so tremendous. We could actually go on and on about um, how far you can go and how much you can benefit from uh, this particular strategy of uh, marketing strategy. But uh, the time is never always our friend uh, when we are having fun as it is. We must say a very big thank you to you, Okbe, for joining us on Business Insights for this week. Thanks for having me, Justin. It is indeed our pleasure. And that's the size of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Uh, Business Insights returns uh, same time uh, next week. Bye for now.